What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're down here in the garage working on the Truck 17 project. If this is your first time tuning in, I highly suggest you go back and watch all the other videos on this truck so you can see where we came from and how we got to where we're at. Um, quick disclaimer, I apologize if there's a bunch of noise in the video. We are experiencing, experiencing some very high winds today and just before I turned the camera on the lights were flickering on and off so we might be working by flashlight today. I've got something really exciting today that I want to get to but before we get to that there's a few small things that need to get accomplished first and uh, this is something I've been waiting for for a while and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it as well. So first thing we got going on is the tie rod. I was initially intending on just getting a new one because this one was bent, but uh, I was able to straighten it out on the press. So I've got new ends and I've been spraying this thing down with penetrating oil for a uh, good two, three weeks now. So I already got one end out, wasn't too bad, but we'll get this other end out, hit it with the wire wheel. We're going to give it a rattle can restoration. I didn't notice that before, they've got the clamp welded to the tire rod. Well, that's fun. Well, I guess try to spread it out the best we can here. I did on the first one if I can find it. So I took a punch and it, the the tube itself is split on both sides of this clamp. I just began to punch in there and trying to spread it out a little bit, try to get any rust that's holding that together and knocked loose. to the rescue. All right, let's see if we can get this thing to budge. Oh yeah, moved right away. Heck, that was almost too easy. That is both welcomed and worrisome. No. Man, that wind is nuts. Wow.
All right, while we're waiting for that to dry, we can go ahead and put our front hubs on. Hopefully the roof doesn't come off of this place. Jeez, oh man. I don't know if you guys are hearing any of this going on, but the uh, the back door on my pole barn down here is a slider door. And even though it's latched in on both ends and I even tightened up the latches to really draw that door down, I'm watching that thing get pulled away from the, the back of the garage. <coughs> okay, well. <coughs> Got that cleaned up pretty good. Now we gotta take our special little spacer here. And that roll pin lines up with that little hole right there in the spider. I think I wanna put some grease on this O-ring first. Okay. appears to be on as far as it's gonna go Back it off for a full turn. Back it down to 50 foot pounds.
Then we back it off, quarter turn. And just by the nature of the seal, it's kind of hard to feel the end play. Not only that, but I'm also moving the whole dang frame around. I can feel ever so slightly little in it. I'll just give it a little bit by hand. There we go. And we take this washer. Our outside nut. Must not quite got all of that burr. It's still a little difficult right at the beginning. Still spins good, not too tight, not too loose. Now I just need to get a pry bar, bend these tabs over in a couple spots, and we can put on our hubcap. It's a lot easier when this thing isn't trying to turn on you. <clears throat> That ain't going nowhere. Yeah, we got ourselves a shiny new hubcap. Just gonna put some of this gray case sealer silicone on it. And I've got all new stainless steel bolts to put it on with. I'll just snug these up ever so slightly. Give that silicone some time to harden up a little bit before we finish torquing it down. Otherwise, you just squeeze it all out the sides. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side real quick. Probably put another coat of paint on that tie rod and uh, probably bring it back when I put the new ends in the tie rod. Okay, well I was gonna show you guys uh, putting the new tie rod ends in, but as luck would have it, they're the wrong ones. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna have to get those returned and probably take the old ones in and have them sized up. Well, I guess we're gonna have to move on to the part that I've been eagerly waiting for. Uh, so let me go get it and I'll show you guys what we got going on. We've got some steer tires for this bad boy. These are, 
what are they? Iron Man, I-301, open shoulder, aggressive steer tires, and they are in a 315-80-22.5. So they're kind of like a miniature flotation tire. I figured it'd be nice to have a little bit wider tire up front since this truck is going to get used on the farm. It's not going to be on paved roads all the time, so functional and I think it's going to look really cool. But we're not going to be putting these on the old steely wheels that we had up front. No, no, no. No, we, we got something better for that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We've got shinies. So, we're going to get these wheels, or we're going to get these tires mounted up on these wheels. We're going to put them on a truck. Might look a little goofy with the tires facing different directions, but we'll make it work. I've been waiting too long for this. So let's get after it. All right, first things first, lay down some carpet for protection. Man, those are gonna look so good. Got our tire bars, and our Murphy's oil soap. Now I'm gonna do this very slowly and very carefully because I do not want to scratch these wheels. They weren't cheap. And if I wouldn't have drugged my feet for so long, I could have got them a little bit cheaper, but. So good. And we got us some counteract tire balancing ballast. I don't know if these are glass beads or what, but you just take the whole bag and you throw it in there. Then first time you go out for a drive, the bag will break and so on and so forth. Science. Some more schmoo on our tire. Well, actually, I only need the one bar. Nice and carefully. Just maybe get lucky and not need the sketchy B 
bead blaster to get these things to set up. I've used plenty of bead blasters, bead blasters, but there's just something about that one that I got. Well, I put some shine on the tire to get rid of my footprints and wipe my greasy fingerprints off of the aluminum. I'll have to hit it with some metal polish because it's kind of smudged up, but still. Man, does that look good. I'm gonna get the other one mounted up real quick and then we'll, uh, we'll get them bolted onto the, you know, I guess you can't call it a truck, the chassis. Well, there's really nothing left to do except get the drums on and get these suckers put on and see what they're going to look like. I like it. I like it a lot. And don't worry. I'll put the rest of these lug nuts on and uh, get them tightened down to where they need to be. But I want to get one of those plastic protectors that you put over your aluminum wheels so the socket on the impact doesn't gouge into it. But for now, just sitting in here, hardly any weight on it. That should be plenty good enough.
Now this, it's been a long time coming. Truck 17 is officially off of the sawhorse. Well guys, that about does it for this episode. I'm happy with what we got done tonight. Don't know if you can hear it. The siren in town is going off again. Wind is getting even worse yet. Uh, so I'm gonna call it a night and call it an episode. I thank all you guys for watching and subscribing and leaving comments and likes and all that good stuff. This right here, getting this thing off the sawhorse, that's a pretty big deal, at least in my book. You know, this thing's sitting on all rubber now. Just get a tie rod on it yet, and then I can move it around. I'm gonna get going, get back to the house. Y'all have a great night. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.